Connected on an all-new Dr. Phil, a husband under suspicion. You believe that he is molesting your daughter and son? Yes. Absolutely not. A mother shocked and outraged. I want to kill him. I just want to watch him die slowly. Is he falsely accused? She's just psycho. You're such a liar. Or did he do the unthinkable? Did your daughter tell yes. you these things? I'm not making it up. She said it. She said it. I swear to God, she said it. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Today we're talking about the last thing you ever want to hear from your little girl. Mommy, Daddy touched my privates. That's what Wilma says her daughter told her this past June. Now Wilma is now convinced that her husband Adam molested their four-year-old daughter and their two-year-old son. Now Wilma, of course, immediately called the police, kicked Adam out of the house, and filed for divorce. But Adam vehemently denies the allegations and claims Wilma is just mentally unstable. He is furious that he's allowed only to see his kids during supervised visits and says Wilma is just making up these molestation allegations because she is angry that their marriage went south. And he is here today, he says, to prove his innocence. So is this a case of falsely accused? Or has this father done the unthinkable? Take a look. Adam and I have two children together. My daughter is four and my son is two. One day my daughter came to me and said that the boy showed her the worm in her pants. And I said, who? And she said, her daddy. I was completely in shock. She said, daddy pulled down brother's panties and then he pulled down my underwear and then he washed his hands. She told me that her dad made her touch her brother's I felt completely enraged. I was so mad. I called Adam at work. Wilma was screaming at me. All I could say was nothing is going on. I called 911 and the police came to the home. At the house the police asked me if any of this was true. I said no. I knew I had nothing to fear because I, I had nothing to hide. This is my worst nightmare, and it's it's happened. Like, it's happening. Just hate him. I have never molested my kids. I have done nothing wrong. My husband, Adam, is nothing but a pedophile. I am being falsely accused of molesting my kids. I am not a child molester. Wilma wants to put me on a cross and burn me. When I think of Adam, I think He's disgusting. Wilma has turned my kids into pawns. My wife has gone completely off the deep end here. When I think about what Adam has done to our children, I feel so angry and enraged that I can't control myself. If I could, I would cut Adam's off and feed it to him and watch him bleed slowly. I wouldn't buy a gun and end it quickly. Okay, I'm here with Adam and Wilma, and you guys are already at odds here. I understand you're upset. Uh, and if this is happening, well, you should be upset. But what are you two going back and forth about before we even start here? What started all of this? She's just psycho. You believe that he is molesting your daughter and your son. Yes. This is your daughter and your son as well. You're the biological father. Yep. So these are your children. Mm -hmm. And she says that you are molesting them. Yep. Are you? No, it couldn't be further from the truth. Why do you believe that he is? Because my daughter came to me saying that <sighs> she has said that every time it happened, she would shut, or Adam would shut the door so no one could see. And you believe this? I absolutely, 100% believe it. And why, why do you believe it? I mean, this is the man you married. You, I mean, you know him. Do you think he's capable of that? Yes. Yes. Y and you believe this right up until this moment. In fact, last night, we got text messages from you. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the text message from Wilma says, I swear to God, I will kill this on stage tomorrow with my bare hands. Wilma says, we were lying in bed right after you called. The kids were laughing and carrying on. I turned over and my daughter was reaching towards my son's private parts. I don't know if she had been touching him for sure. I got up and turned the light on for her and my son followed us and threw up. Then at 8.13, you, you texted, I just had a realization. That's why he's been throwing up all along. I feel nuts right now. A minute later, you text back. So that means he's been molesting my son since he was an infant. What the Who does this kind of thing? So you were very upset last night. Very upset. And so you now conclude that with your son throwing up last night, given the fact that your daughter was reaching for him, that that's a show of anxiety and is causing him to be nauseated. Correct. Adam, she says that you have molested your son and daughter, mm -hmm. that you've watched porn in front of your daughter, and she says that she called the police and made a report about all of this. Mm -hmm. Were you questioned? Yep. And when you, when you were told this, it was by your daughter? Yes. And how did you feel when she told you? I felt nuts. I felt like my worst nightmare ever had come true. I, 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 I was completely hurt. And how do you feel towards him? I just, I want to kill him. There's no other word for it. I just want to watch him die slowly. You say that she was on a, quote, evil kick. Yeah. for at least 10 days prior to all of these at, allegations. At least, yeah. What's evil kick mean? Just saying that, you know, she wanted a divorce, that um, she was unhappy with the, the marriage. And how long have you all been married? Eight years, together 10. About 10 and a half, yeah. And you say for this entire eight years, he's been raping you? Yes. In my sleep. He's never once made one one sexual advance towards me while I've been awake. Every single time we've ever had sex was when I was asleep and I would wake up with him on me or f doing something to me sexually. Yeah, yeah, shake no. your head, it's true. It's no, very it's true, yes it is. She takes lots of medication and she took this muscle relaxer because her, she was low on pain <clears throat> pills and then she would like double up on these muscle relaxers and I take the same kind of muscle relaxer and if I even take You're such a liar. You take them so many times, Adam. I took one a week. Oh. They're still at home. That's oh. why I never got the prescriptions yeah. filled, Adam. You would Adam. take two or three a night. No, I wouldn't. And then you'd be like, no oh, I'm sorry, I'm falling asleep. It's like she'd take one at six and then around like 10, 10, 30, she'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm still, my back still hurts. So she'd take another one. And then within like a half hour, she'd be like totally falling asleep. I was interested to see if you wanted to talk about that because if somebody was molesting my children, I wouldn't want to talk about another damn thing. I wouldn't want to talk about pills. I wouldn't want to talk about muscle relaxers. It's always something I wouldn't to... talk about. So I want to talk about that. I would want to find out what the hell is going on, and if it's going on, and what's going on. I mean, that would be my focus here. I, I was just curious yeah. what you wanted to talk about. I want to talk about the kids being molested. I don't even want to. He has an excuse for everything. He always has. Well, I, I've got, I, I want to get down to details on this. And I want to tell you both something I feel very strongly about when we come back. Uh, you're going to find out what Wilma says Adam did that made her worry that she might never see her daughter again. We'll be right back. Adam has come to the home trying to lure my daughter out of the home. Open the door. I've got candy. Open the door. Open the door. This is just another manipulative tale that she's trying to feed somebody that will listen. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. This organization wants to terrorize me. Imagine believing your every move. You said 10 to 15 stalkers followed you. Is being monitored. 
I have 1,784 pieces of evidence. He signaled the car. Did you see that hand motion? Is he dealing in reality? You said you had a stalker on your roof. Were the police called? They were. They have no record of it. Or paranoia. Maybe it's not happening. I'm afraid of you. I'm honestly afraid of you. That's tomorrow. Adam needs to be in jail for the rest of his life for what he's done to our children. I believe Wilma is delusional and she needs help. He needs to be locked up and thrown away the key. He doesn't need to see daylight ever again. My greatest fear is that nothing will happen to him. He is a child molester. Well, Wilma has just told me that she would like to see her husband, Adam, die a slow death because she is convinced that he has molested her four-year-old daughter and her two-year-old son. Wilma says she didn't think things could get any worse until Adam tried to lure their daughter out of the house with candy while a protection order was in place. Take a look. I'm terrified that he'll try to kidnap the children. Adam has come to the home trying to lure my daughter out of the home with candy. I heard Adam say, come down, open the door. I've got candy. Open the door. Open the door. I never tried to lure my daughter out of the house with candy or anything. This is just another manipulative tale that she's trying to feed somebody that will listen. Adam's absolutely stalking me and the children. Adam's driven around the house so many times to spy on me. No. I haven't been driving by the house. He told the next door neighbor to spy on me through the bushes. No, I have not told the neighbors to spy on her from the bushes. Adam has also had the mail lady come to my house. She came inside of the home at one point and just kept saying, who's in there? Who lives there with you? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Adam kidnapped my kids and killed them so that they couldn't speak, so that he wouldn't go to prison the rest of his life. That's what I'm afraid of. That's my worst fear. Okay, well, look, l let me be sure I understand your position because it's important to you. You think he's molesting your four-year-old and your two-year-old. You think he's tried to kidnap your four-year-old with candy, to lure her out with candy. And do you think if he got his hands on her and got her away that he would kill her? I think her he would do anything to keep her quiet. Absolutely. He knows he's going to face <clears throat> life in prison. I, I assume you called the police when he attempted to kidnap your daughter in violation of a protection order. No, I didn't. So he's at your house trying to lure your daughter out with he candy. He lured her out. And you don't call the police? No, I didn't call. Why would you not? That's, you, have a, you have an order in place, right? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like they, they weren't going to do anything anyway. Are you telling the truth here? Absolutely. Because, you know, you've, you, you've talked to the police, then you've talked to us. These are very serious allegations. And I, I, I need to be clear with both of you. I take this very seriously. This is a very high stakes scenario. Mm -hmm. If you are molesting your children, mm -hmm. then you are severely impaired and you need a lot of help. And you, if that's the case, you need to tell me and I will help you every way that I can. I will get you professional help. I will send you to professional help. I will do anything and everything I can to help you and people can get over and recover from that. If you're doing that, you need to tell me that. Because if, if you don't and I find out that it's true, then I'm not going to help you. I'm going to help prosecute you. And let me say to you, if you're making this up, if you got mad and you said these things in anger, and they didn't really happen, and you didn't get told what you said you got told, then you need to tell me now. And I will help you with your anger. I will help you get a divorce or, or stay married or whatever you want to do. 
But if you're making this up, then that is child abuse. And you, you are alienating them from their father. You are misusing the legal system. Yep. And I will do everything I can to hold you accountable for that if you're making these up because those are serious lies. If you are, tell me now and I will help you. Don't tell me later because I will help prosecute you later. I am offering my advocacy to either one of you now. But that is a time-limited offer. Did you make this up? Absolutely not. Think about what you're saying. I don't have to. I didn't make anything up. Are you being inappropriate with your children? Think about what you're saying. Absolutely not. Then, uh, I, have I been clear? Oh, yeah. Do and you I'm, understand I'm, the role I'm going to play if either one of you are lying about this? Mm -hmm. Just so we know. We'll be right back. I feel like Adam's been raping me through the entire marriage. Adam's only had sex with me while I was asleep. I believe she is making all this up. I feel like Adam's been raping me through the entire marriage. Adam's only had sex with me while I was asleep. All of our sex has been consensual. It was never consensual. I would always wake up in the night with Adam on top of me. There were numerous mornings that I would wake up and was very sore. She claims that I drugged her. The whole thing is just mind-blowing. He would buy bottles of Benadryl, like four to ten bottles at any given time, and go out a week later and buy more. I don't know if he was putting it into something I was drinking. She takes these real strong muscle relaxers and then proceeds to just fall asleep. I believe she is making all this up to make me look like a bad person or a monster. I feel like he raped me because he's sick. I feel like he doesn't know any other way. Do you want to reconsider your position? Absolutely not. Do you want to reconsider your position? No. Okay, let's take a look at what happened. Wilma, you talked to the police and you said on you, you reported on 625 that you had bedtime conversations that took place the night before and that your daughter said, he showed me the worm in his pants. You said who? The daughter said the boy. You said what boy? Daughter said brother. And you asked no more questions at that point. That's directly from the police report. Is that correct? Correct. Then... We talked to you about this same conversation, and you said your daughter said he showed me the worm in his pants, which is exactly what you told the police here. You said who? You told us the boy that came over yesterday, same thing is said here. You said you asked your cousin. Your daughter said no. Daddy, what do you mean worm? And... Your daughter said, so you told us a different story than you told the police. Why? Time had passed. I may be confusing what she said. I don't sit and read the police reports. I have tried to block out to cope day to day of okay. what has happened. And this got referred to CPS, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And, and they did an investigation and did a forensic interview with your daughter, yep. correct? Correct. And their result was no finding. Mm -hmm. They said they could find no evidence at all that this has happened. That was their finding. I'm not, I'm just right. saying that's what they found. Right. Correct? Correct. Going forward, according to Wilma, daughter said you know that pretend guy and that pretend boy and the pretend girl he made us pull our undies and underwear down and he washed his hands that's what you told the police correct that's directly from the police report that's why it's in quotes right mm -hmm. but you told us daddy 
pulled down brother's pants and then mine and then washed his hands. She did say that. She okay, did. Why she, are she you telling the police that a pretend guy and then you're telling us that she said daddy? Because she said that at a later date. She did say that. She said that and that. She has said both things. Maybe I'm confusing everything that she has yeah. said, but she has. I specifically remember the one on the right more than the one on the, on the left. And that's just how it is. Well, again, CPS has no finding that confirms this. Just telling you what they're saying. Okay. Now, you tell the police in the report, again, because it's in quotes, Daddy showed us in the shower. You never told us this. On 625, you said could not give any additional details about the drugging because you said he drugs you, right? You think he drugs I, you? I absolutely 100% think so. And you wow. tell us you think that he's putting grape Benadryl in your grape Kool-Aid. Yeah, that's my <laughs> assumption. Okay, in the handwritten protection order, you, you said that Adam had strangled and raped you for eight years. But you never told us this. I was more concerned about the kids than myself. I'm concerned about these inconsistencies. I did suffer a concussion on Mother's Day, so I don't know if the, uh, how, I haven't even gotten more medical attention since then, so my memory's not as clear probably as it should be, and I have tried to block most of it out just to cope day to day to take care of the children, to even get through the day without going nuts. Well, you didn't mention a concussion to us before. I had a concussion on Mother's Day. I, I, she, she bumped her head uh, while we were out and about uh, having dinner. And uh, yeah, she did have a concussion. And that is when um, really things did change. Not that She wasn't normal after that, that's for sure. <laughs> well, there is a lot of he said, she said going on here. Uh, I'm going to continue to get to the truth. I did invite Jack Tremarco to give both Adam and Wilma a lie detector test. I have not opened that envelope. We're gonna talk about those results coming up. I will gladly take a polygraph test to prove that I didn't do anything wrong. Either. I would love if Adam took a polygraph test. I think he can lie to anybody he wants, but I don't think he can lie to a polygraph test. I think what the polygraph test results will show is that I am a good dad and I'm only there for my kids. Because of Wilma's false accusations, all of my visits have to be supervised. I don't feel safe at all having my children around Adam. The kids have started to act out and do have behaviors from being molested. Whenever Adam does have visits with the children, my son will throw up. My daughter is defecating in her pants. A few months ago, my daughter did start touching my son inappropriately as well. The children have learned every behavior from him. I'm horrified at everything that's been going on. I'm completely devastated. Now, you gave some quotes after the police left as well, and I want to include those. You said, quote, that you were told by your daughter, Daddy touched my private parts. Daddy shut the door so no one could see him touch brother's private parts. Daddy made me touch brother's private parts. Daddy pulled down brother's panties, then mine, and then washed his hands. Those were additional allegations you made after the police left. Why did you not make them while the police were there? She said them later. These were said later? These were said okay, later. So you told the police that she told you this on the night of the 24th. You told us that she told you this at breakfast on the 25th. She made more comments. She made the actual comments. With the, Do you yeah, see my problem with that? Just from a forensic standpoint, it troubles me that you're imprecise about that. That's fine. I'm not lying. I'm not making anything up. I mean, she actually said it. And if I can't remember word for word, I'm sorry. But she actually made these comments and she's still making comments. I, I have two other statements that I want to share with you. Um, 
This is the forensic interview with your daughter, okay? And guys, I do my homework on this stuff. I, as you, I can see that. That's I, as, I as you can this. well see, because I take this seriously. No, no doubt. Okay, so in the forensic interview with your daughter, the investigator showed daughter a gingerbread drawing of a girl and a boy, which is exactly the appropriate forensic tool to use in a forensic interview, and they talked about body parts. Daughter uses the correct terminology to identify those body parts. At this time, there is no evidence or disclosure to support the allegations. Now, then there was a forensic interview, not with the child, but with you. Wilma was advised of the interview process and we talked with her about the allegations. Each time when we would talk about the allegations concerning her daughter, Wilma would change topic and talk about the relationship with Adam and things that have happened to her. She would change the topic. That's not me, that's them. You didn't feel like talking to the people that could bring him to accountability? I was ashamed. I felt embarrassed that it even happened because my family has a history of it. I was completely going out of my mind. Wilma, did this really happen? It really happened. And, and I don't mean... I swear on everything that I know, it happened. And you didn't see it happen. What I'm asking you if happened is, did, did your daughter tell yes. you these things? Yes, she did. And I'm, I would never lie about anything, and especially that. Like, she said it. She made so many comments. Yes, she did. Well, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I did ask Jack Tremarco to come here to conduct polygraphs, which have taken place over the last couple of days. I have the results in this envelope, and I'm going to um, see these for the first time when you do, right after the break. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. He swears he's being wiretapped and followed. He signaled the car. Did you see that hand motion? This organization wants to terrorize me. Or maybe it's not happening at all. That's tomorrow. With everything I've gone through with my kids, I feel like I'm not. He's accused me of being crazy this whole time. I feel like I am crazy. I'm so angry with everything that he's done. It feels like a living nightmare to be falsely accused of so many horrible things. Adam needs to know that I'm his worst nightmare and I'm not going away and I'm not backing down and that <laughs> if he wants war, he's got it because I'm not going away. Wilma is convinced that her husband Adam has molested their children. Now it's time for the polygraph results. I invited polygraph expert Jack Tremarco to administer the test to both Adam and Wilma. When you met with uh, Mr. Tremarco and he conducted this examination, um, did it seem like he knew what he was doing? Oh, yeah. I, I, I've seen him on TV before. I mean, he's the best. Yeah. And yeah. so you, you don't have any problems with the test. You, whatever the results are, you, the test was properly administered. Yeah. It, it was... It was reasonably my, my explained own, to you. My only fear is that it would be like a, a false, you know, because I know what I did and didn't do. And so, I mean. There are no false positives. Well, there are none. Okay. Because I'm asking you the same you thing. Didn't. You, it, did you? Absolutely. You got along with Mr. Tamarco okay? Absolutely. And it was a fair test? Mm -hmm. Everything was explained to you. There weren't any un- there were any terms that you didn't know the no, meaning of no, or whatever? Because no. he takes quite some time oh, to yeah, say, let's yeah. define what sexual contact no, he's, means. He's let's very define... thorough. Yeah. <clears throat> and so you, you you don't equivocate about that. No. He, he did a proper test yeah. to explain things properly yeah. to you. And whatever the results, you're not going to say, well, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. He didn't do a good no, test. No, no, no. I'm glad he did it. And, and, and the same thing with you. You understood the terms. You understood everything that was going on. And like you said, there are no false positives. So you don't have any problem with the test? No. Okay. 
Jack, did things, in terms of protocol-wise, did things go to your liking as far as meeting the conditions of the testing? Yes. Um, these were about as normal or average exams as could be run. All right. Well, here are the questions that were asked. Um, you were asked um, four questions, and I'm going to say private parts instead of what was actually said. Um, so, Wilma, well, the first question you were asked is, did your daughter tell you, quote, daddy touched my private parts? Um, and your answer was? Uh, the second question you were asked is, when you say your daughter told you that daddy touched my private parts, is that true? Yes. The results to both of those is that you were being deceptive. What? But I, I swear, I swear on everything I wasn't. I swear. The results are I that you were being deceptive. I swear on everything. I swear she said it. Jack, was this a close call? In order to have failed this exam using this particular format, she would have needed a minus four or above, and she was a minus nine. Minus I don't even, nine. I swear to God she said it. I swear on. You were asked life, two other questions. I swear to God she said it. You were asked two other questions. Did you instruct your daughter to say, Daddy touched my private parts? And you said? No. You were said, Did you tell your daughter to say, to Daddy God, touched my it. private parts? God, and you said? No. And the results to both of those questions were deceptive. I swear to God, I, I'm not making this up, I swear. Jack, were those answers a close call? Uh, same scoring criteria, but uh, this it, though, examination was a minus 11. This was a minus 11. Adam, mm -hmm. you were asked, have you ever touched either of your children for a sexual reason? Mm -hmm. And your answer was? No. You were asked, since their birth, have you ever touched either of your children for a sexual reason? No. Nope. And you said? No. And the results to both of those questions was non-deceptive. How is that possible? I swear to God, I didn't do that. I swear to God, I'm not making it up. I swear to you, I swear to God, I swear. I swear on my life, I did not make this up. I swear to God, I did not make this up. I did t was thinking in my mind, even when it was going on, that I told her to tell the therapist, you need to tell them, you know, what you've been telling me. But I didn't, I didn't make it up. I swear to God, I didn't make it up. She said it. She said it. She said it. Yes, she did. I swear to God, she said it. I swear, I swear to God, she said it. How do you feel about the fact that this test... I'm not making test, it up. How do you feel about the fact that this test confirms that Adam has not touched your children in a sexual manner? I feel bad. I mean, she did say it. She, I swear to God she said it. I swear you feel to God bad. she said it. You should, you should be elated. You have I'm just not found making out, it up. You have just found out... That these evidence indicate that your child has not been molested. Is that not the best news you've ever heard yes, in your whole that's life? that's terrific. That's absolutely, that's, I'm sorry. Is there an explanation for how all of this could be what it is? Well, we're going to find out the answer to that question when we come back. God, she said it. I was molested as a young child. I never got help for anything. Everything was just kind of swept under the rug. She's got this paranoia that people are out to get her and the kids. In my eyes, he's not safe around anybody's child.
Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? That's more than one in five children. Now, these are our neighbors, our kids that play in the neighborhood, co-workers, friends' children. The problem is closer than you would think, but so is the solution. Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or call 323-461-PHIL. Womo grew up in a very abusive environment. I was molested as a young child. I grew up in an extremely abusive household. I do not believe that uh, Woma has dealt with any of the damage that she has endured growing up. The abuse haunts me day in and day out. I never got help for anything. Everything was just kind of swept under the rug. I believe that Woma is accusing me of molesting my children because of all the abuse that she suffered when she was a kid. I'm not making anything up because of what happened to me as a child. Wilma has so much unresolved damage that she's got this paranoia that people are out to get her and the kids, and I am not that person. In my eyes, Adam is the biggest creep, pedophile monster there is. He's not safe around anybody's child. I Wilma? didn't make it up. I swear to God, okay, I didn't make it now, up. Okay, right, let me, let me say a few things. First off, I, I'm very sorry about what happened to you as a child, and I'm glad that the person has been held accountable for it. I, I'm very sorry for that. I hate that for you, and you said you've never dealt with any of that. I, I hate that for you as well. But I, I want to say that there are multiple prongs here that support that this hasn't happened to your children. And I would think that would be really good news. I'm, I'm glad that it hasn't. If, I mean, I have not made it up. I did not make up what she said. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, she did tell me those things, Adam. She did. I swear to God, she did. Why did you keep changing the subject when the forensic examiners wanted to talk to you about the details of what she said? I kept having flashbacks said. of my childhood, of what happened. And when she made those comments, it, I was going crazy. I kept going back to my childhood in my mind and couldn't even think. If you were having flashbacks, if this was making you disoriented and avoidant of the situation, that's a very powerful effect. I was telling Could the lady that... doing the investigation that they were telling me, you know, this isn't about you your childhood this this is and I was having flashbacks I really was all right well let's take a break and I'm going to tell Wilma and Adam what I think needs to happen immediately for the sake of these children when we come back I wish I could tell my children that everything's going to be okay but I have no control this is, this is bad. It's a scary thing. I wish I could tell my kids it's not their fault. They didn't do anything wrong. I wish I could tell them it would all be okay. I don't know that it's going to be. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. What's been happening so far is you profess to believe that this man has victimized y'all's children. I can see no evidence of that whatsoever. This isn't just a polygraph examination. Uh, with a forensic background, I have pointed out to you before I opened this envelope, and I did not open this envelope till I was here, that I saw things that compromised the credibility of the report. The CPS saw things that compromised the credibility of the report and came back with no findings and no recommended actions. We've seen 
uh, inconsistencies in what you told them versus what you told us. We've seen now polygraph exam. I mean, there is an overwhelming amount of evidence that suggests to me that your daughter uh, has not been molested, that your son has not been molested. And if you are so impacted by what has happened to you in the past that it's, it's distorts your ability to talk about it, then it could certainly distort your ability to reason about it. And I'm the guy that says you have to believe children until you find out otherwise. Yeah. I think we have found out otherwise here. I am very sorry <laughs> that you have had to do this. I know you had great trepidation about coming on here. Yeah. And you made it very clear the reason you did is because you didn't have anything to hide with regard to molesting mm -hmm. your children. And I, I hope trusting your gut made sense to you. Uh, because now you have yeah. a lot more evidence than you had yeah. before. This is, this is beyond what I was hoping for. I, uh, I commend you highly. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy of what you've done here. Well, I will be happy when you have your children in your lap. Uh, me too. And they have their daddy in their lives. And I, you guys have serious issues between you. I will offer to get you very competent professional help with those issues. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you think, as you said, that you had a concussion and it's changed your behavior and your thinking, then let me help you get that evaluated. Let me try to figure out what's going on here. As much as you feel like reality is spinning right now, you should have joy that all signs point to the fact that no one has hurt your children. Uh, I want to thank this couple for coming here today, and I say that because these are very important issues. If a child comes to you and gives you an indication that they've been touched inappropriately in some way, then please take that very, very seriously. Don't go running at the accused person like your hair's on fire in a hysterical way. Do your homework too, but believe that child, accept that child, nurture that child, and find out what the truth is. Uh, I have a special thanks to give to Jack Tremarco uh, for conducting the polygraph exam. Um, to learn the signs of sexual molestation, go to drphil.com and we'll tell you what to look for because there's a lot of shame involved with this and they often don't uh, come forward with it. You have to recognize it. Thanks for being here so long. We will help you with this if you will let us.